The roseate spoonbill has one of the weirdest beaks in nature. Some of the scariest eyes in the world. And one of the most glamorous plumages of all birds. It's a bird of contradictions, but get ready to see the world through its rose-colored lenses. This is the roseate spoonbill. Hi, my name is Aranya Iyer, and you're watching Animal Logic's World of Birds. This species belongs to the genus Platalea, the spoonbill half of Threskionorthidae. The other half are ibises, so think of them as a distant cousin to the scarlet ibis. This is the only species of spoonbill found in the Western Hemisphere. They live in the tropical wetlands of the Americas and the Caribbean. Their spoonbill cousins live across the pond from England to Australia. Although they're just as fancy, they're nowhere as colorful as their American counterparts. Sometimes tourists in Florida mistake the roseate spoonbill for a flamingo. But come on, look how much shorter that neck is. And the bill shape. The flamingo has a bent down hook look. And the spoonbill has, well, it's in its name, a long spoon-shaped bill. The spoonbill size is somewhere between the flamingo and the scarlet ibis. It's about 70 centimeters tall and weighs up to two kilos. Despite being lighter than a chihuahua, roseate spoonbills are almost 10 times taller. Their long legs and necks allow them to wade into deeper water to hunt for their favorite prey. Now, let's get this out of the way. Why they're pink? I wish I could tell you something crazy, like they're 80% cotton candy. But once again, it's because of the pigment in their food. Spoonbills are ingesting a red pigment called campoxanthin, which can be found in algae, shrimp, and other crustaceans. The bird will also eat plants, insects, and tiny fish that have been ignored by larger wading birds. To catch food, the spoonbill will hang its head down in the water and sweep its bill from side to side. This motion creates small whirlpools of water that prey gets trapped in. When the roseate spoonbill senses prey, it immediately snaps its bill shut. And voila, lunch is served. The spoonbill is a social butterfly. They've even been known to hang with other waiters like herons, egrets, and ibises. Wow, it's true what they say. Birds of a feather fly together. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all breeding season. Speaking of breeding, these birds will migrate to nesting grounds filled with large numbers of other roseate spoonbills. Since they're fairly large, their flying style is long and slow. Roseate spoonbills are serial monogamists. They change partners every breeding season. Once a match is made, the couple makes a nest in the trees, bushes, or reeds, and the female will lay up to four eggs. After three weeks of incubation, the chicks will hatch. They'll be born white with a slight pinky tinge. Their pink grown-up feathers will pop up in a couple years. The roseate spoonbill is known to spook easily. And maybe it's because they're frequently caught by predators. Alligators, pumas, and jaguars? No thanks. And their eggs are in danger of being snatched by raccoons, coyotes, and hawks. The worst time to be a roseate spoonbill was in the 1800s, when the bird was almost hunted to extinction, all because people wanted to wear their beautiful pink feathers. It's illegal to hunt any of these birds now, but humans are still a major threat. We also pose a threat to scarlet ibises and flamingos. These gorgeous waders are losing their habitats due to wetlands being drained or pollution contaminating the water. I'm a simple woman. I want to keep our wetlands wet, our waters clean, and our pink birds pink. Let's make it happen. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to hit subscribe for new episodes every week. Keep soaring to new heights. I'll see you later.